This is this is they, they might stay, yeah, but they could stay here.
and the resurrection and life, said the Lord. He who believes in me, who he died, yet shall he live. The hour is coming, and now is the dead shall hear the voice of the Lord, of God, and those who hear shall live. We brought nothing into this world, and it's certain that we carry nothing out. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If we live, we live unto the Lord. And if we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord. For to this end Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. I am he, I am the first and the last. I am he who lives. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. I have the keys of death, and because I live, he shall live also. Because I live, he shall live also. God bless his word for our hearts to pray that as we continue this program, the blessing of the Lord be with us. Can we see the for a while, please? I want to take this opportunity to <coughs> welcome everyone. Oh, no. Desirous to come to this Thanksgiving service, homegoing service of our late brother. And we, we thank you for being here. And um, the weather is kind of threatening, so we would have to make this and um, see what we can do as much as, as quick as possible and, and to get out of this building. We are drawing this up, so we have to be wise and do things reasonably. I welcome everyone, all the immediate relatives of the late brother, his dear wife and children, relatives and friends, um, and those of you who travel from distant lands overseas, we, we, we are happy that you were able to come over. Um, so this is Pastor Medford, who is the pastor of this church, he got stuck in Atlanta, Georgia because of some difficulties, aviation problems, and the play planes, uh, many of the planes have to be grounded, there, and she will not be able to come. So here we have my other daughter, Sister Medford, who is pastor of this church. She, Dr. Medford, is, is pastor of this church, and this is one of my other, Dr. Sister Medford, who lives in Trinidad, and she and her husband is here. And incidentally, she is here in St. Vincent to attend her brother and her funeral in, in Yambu. So we are thankful that you with the past in here by us and greater. God bless everyone and thank you. There's just so many faces that I'm acquainted with. And I don't know how much of you have been acquainted with me, but I thank God for you being here today. The, 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 we're going to have Sister Pastor, Pastor Dr. Pastor in it, um, say this is now it is better than Dr. And this is another doctor. Dr. Baltaran. Take us through the program. Thank you very much. I said good morning to all. Convey condolences to the friends and family of the deceased. And we pray God's peace and strength to all in this season. Let us stand for prayer. Most gracious God, we turn to you in the sorrow and grief of our bereavement, praying that we may find the strength we need in your sustaining grace, so that even as we mourn the death of one whom we knew and loved, 
we may not be overcome by this trial, but we may hold fast, trusting in your goodness and mercy. Assure, assure us, O oh Lord our God, that death is not the end of those who trust in you. And may our hearts be so composed in the Holy Spirit that all fear and bitterness may be swallowed up yes. in the light and peace you give to your troubled children, to Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us say our Father prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let's say the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not go on. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares the table before me in the presence.
in the arms of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. It's celebration time this morning. Amen. We have scripture reading. Scripture reading. The persons here for scripture reading can come now. And you can stand right here. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. The scripture reading this morning will be taken from Romans 8, verses 31 to 39. It begins, What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, ye rather that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God? Who also maketh intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or prosecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are appointed as sheep for slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loves us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the end of the scripture reading. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Edmund Jackson, as I said before. I am the watchful master of St. George Lodge 2616 EC, of which our brother Fitzwar was a member. And we are, I bring you greetings and deepest condolences to the family from St. George Lodge. This morning, the scripture reading is taken from Psalms 90. Psalms chapter 90, reading from verse 1 to 12. Lord, Thou hadst been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction, and sayest, Return ye children of men. For thousands of years in thy sight are uh, but as yesterday when it is past and as a watch in the night. Thou carriest them away as with the flood. They are as a sleep in which morning, in the morning they are like grass which grows up. In the morning it flourisheth and grows up, and in the evening it is cut down and withereth. For we are consumed by thy anger, and by thy wrath we are troubled. Thou hast set in our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are three score years and ten. And if by reason our strength they be four score years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow for it is soon cut, down, cut off, and we fly away. Who knoweth the power of thy anger? And according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. This is the end of the Christian region. Amen. Amen. Let's stand for a second. 
second song, Great is Our Faithfulness.
Good morning, everyone. Um, if I happen to tear up during this tribute to my uncle, it's not because he's no longer here with us. It's primarily due to the cherished memories I have of him and with him. Um, mommy could not be here with us today to say goodbye to her brother. So I'm here on her behalf. Not only am I here on her behalf, I am here on my own accord. And me being here on my own accord speaks volumes. Not only is Uncle Fitzroy mommy's brother, according to her, he was her guardian. When as teenagers, their mother migrated to Trinidad, leaving them with without adult supervision. Frequently, he served as her provider during some of her economic challenges. And I vividly, I mean vividly, remember some of those challenges. As the songwriter wrote, memories don't leave like people do. They always stay with you, whether they've been good or bad. And gosh, I have so many memories, fond memories, fond recollections of my uncle that will forever be etched in my memory. Of all my siblings, I frequented his home the most, spending summer vacations at Murray Village and then again at Paulover. I was the fourth wheel to the Kim, Chris, and Gail Trio. That was before the arrival of Kian, Zoe, and Kanda. I remember all too well his main discipline tool. It was the look. I never got a cutter from him, but I got the look. I remember the issuance of his command, hit the sack. You guys don't know what you're talking about. That's um, Zoe Kanda and Kian. It meant go take a nap whether you sleep or not. Just imagine high day time, we had to interrupt our play time with taking a nap. And we only had two options. Either you sleep or you pretend you were sleeping. But you better make sure and close your eyes. Even now, as an adult, I look forward to my midday nap. When I'm tired, his, air, his words reverberate in my head. Go take a nap. And sure enough, I go take a nap. That's how I reset my clock. Um, last August, when my sister visited on Fitzroy, she shared some photos of them together at the nursing home, obviously. My heart broke. I immediately said to her, I am going to find a cheap flight. And indeed, I found a cheap flight. Within weeks, I was in SVG. It was my shortest and most spontaneous trip to SVG. In hindsight, it was worth the sacrifice. Because although he was incoherent, it was the last time I got to see my uncle alive. My decisions to visit underscores the phrase, don't put off for tomorrow what you can do today, because tomorrow may never come. Sometimes we gotta make it while the sun shines. In closing, much thanks to you for joining us to bid farewell to a beloved husband, father, brother, uncle, friend, neighbor, but last but, last but not least, one of SVG's best bartender in his era. Thank you. And oh, he was an excellent baker. How can I possibly forget those back cake? 
and the long bread until we meet again. Before I left this morning, my brother sent me a text, which he could not be here today, which I want to share with you guys. I'm going to read verbatim. Hoping that you had a safe flight. So sorry for not being able to make it. Standing next to other family members in his send-off, he was a great soul that would provide a meal for us on Sunday when our mother was short on cash. He was the uncle of all uncles. May his soul rest peacefully. Again, before I left, mom said to say hi to her brother. Hi from mom to you. Thank you. At this time, we have the choir, compulsory free choir, with a room, followed by words of expression by Bishop Oliver.
Good morning. I firstly would want to extend my condolences to Sister Zoe Mori and Sister Janice Samuel and all relatives, condolences to you. But when I think of, or when I look at the program, it says a celebration of life. And immediately I go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, where Paul made the point that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Amen. And he said this to say that if he was risen, then there is hope for us Amen. as a people. Because if he was risen, one day it will happen to us. And so we are here in a sense, we are sad that our brother, father, uncle have passed on. But one day, he will rise again. And as the scripture says, one day we would say, O oh death, where is thy state? God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Bishop Lincoln. And only if you die in Christ will we rise to be God. Yes. Amen? Yes. So I'm encouraging those of you who do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior to accept Him before time changes in your terms. Amen? Amen? And this time we have a tribute by Mr. Douglas Williams. After that, we stand for the singing of when we all get to heaven. Mr. Douglas Williams. Good morning. Good morning. I am pleased to be asked to deliver this tribute to my dear friend and brother, Fitzroy Bertram Cambridge. I knew Fitzroy for many years, first as a schoolboy when our paths would cross going to or from school. If my memory serves me right, I believe he attended the Wesley Hall Methodist School while I attended the Kingston Anglican School. Because of his physical disability, he was often teased on the streets by other school children, and I would empathize with him. After leaving primary school for the boys' grammar school, I continued to see Fitzroy when we would exchange pleasantries. I left St. Vincent in 1956 for the UK, where I remained for about 10 years. But on my return, I would encounter him either in the course of his employment as an office attendant in a government department or a part-time barman at some official or private function. Fitzroy was employed as a vault attendant at the High Court Registry, where in my profession as a lawyer, I had the most frequent encounters with him. When Fitzroy retired from the government service, he came and worked for me as a messenger from January 2000 until December 2002. When I observed how painful it was for him to cope with the steep steps which led to my office. When Fitzroy decided to tie the nuptial knot, he informed Mr. Clifford Edwards and myself. And so it was 
that we both had the pleasure and privilege of presenting him at the altar at the Methodist Church. He named one of his daughters after my own daughter, Zoe. And he would often make salted peanuts and brought them to me to take home to my children. Fitzroy became a member of the Masonic Lodge where he served for many years as Tyler until his retirement due to ill health. Fitzroy was a devoted family man. He was also full of fun and laughter. We will miss Fitzroy. On behalf of my family and on my own behalf, I extend condolences to Fitzroy. Fitzroy wid widow, Zorina and children. May he rest in peace. Amen. Amen.
good morning. Let me say good evening and good afternoon to those who are streaming this service from wherever country you are streaming from. I am delighted to be the one delivering the eulogy this morning. Because 22 years ago, I called Fitzroy and I said, I'm going to marry your daughter. He didn't even ask me which one. <laughs> but he said, congratulations. <laughs> Mr. Fitzroy Bertram Cambridge, also known as Brocka or Hippity Hop. But some of us gathered here, and those who know and fondly loved this man called him Papa. I had the privilege of meeting Papa in the early 90s. He was my father-in-law. I can boast that he was a humble, hard-working, jovial, and respectable individual. Papa was the third of nine children born to Miss Irvin Isaac and Adolphus Cambridge on the 8th of March, 1938. Fitzroy grew up humbly with parents who afforded him basic necessities, discipline, and education. He worked at various private establishments in his early years and was also an employee of the government service for many years. Having worked at places such as data processing department and registry, he was famous for being one of the top barmen in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. He was a hard and dedicated worker and did not allow his physical challenges to affect him, working even beyond his retirement age. He met and married Zarina Forbes, a union of almost 60 years that produced six children, Cornell, Janice, Jillian, Declan, Zoe, and Kanda. He loved and was proud of his seven grandchildren, Darrell, Sophia, Clint, Zia, Shalise, and Kira, and Kareem. Can't forget him. He's going to kill me. He, at a young age, undertook family responsibilities when his mother left for Trinidad and Tobago and left some of his siblings in his care. He was a family man. He went above and beyond to ensure that his children received what he did not. He was well known and loved to have been around people. He gave unselfishly. He was a strong father who taught and instilled discipline in his children, teaching them lessons that cherish today. I'll be finished before five o'clock. <laughs> Papa lived believing that nothing you eat was ever bad for you. He chose a different outlook on restrictions of diet and lifestyle as advised. His philosophy was that something has to carry you home. <laughs> and if it's not eating, then something else will kill you. A mentality that took him beyond the three school years and 10. Three years ago, when dementia took over his mind and body, his health started to decline. This was the most challenging time for his wife and his children sought to receive the best possible care for him at the Garden of Eden. And that was where he took his final breath. We can speak of endless examples of kindness. 
We can speak of endless examples of his love. We can speak of endless examples of his charisma, his sense of humor, and his no-nonsense attitude. But his children and I thought that the greatest decision was when he accepted Jesus as his Savior and Lord and was baptized right here in this church. A decision that we are proudest of, a decision that even as we mourn, we are happy knowing that he is resting in the arms of his Savior. Today, we say farewell to a man. We celebrate the life loaned to us. Life is a journey to be lived and celebrated. At this junction of the journey, he must depart from us and complete it on his own. On behalf of my family, the Pompey family, I'd like to say our deepest condolences to Zarina, our children, our grandchildren, many relatives and friends. Gone from this earth, but still very much present in all of our hearts. Thank you. Yes, wonderful. Amen. To be, to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. Hallelujah. We will sing that song, Blessed Assurance, followed by the Ministry of the Word. And I'm proud to be a part of this legacy. My granddad, my dad, myself, my sons, all ministers of the gospel. Jesus is mine. Followed by Dr. Bishop, Reverend Christopher King. Amen. Blessed
part of the service. And um, as a preacher, I feel tempted to preach, really, really preach, and then I take your next hour. Do you like that? <laughs> no. <laughs> I know how I'm going to only pass. Only if they understand what I'm saying. See, in a set congregation like this, you are tempted to preach. But I don't want to spoil anything that, that had been done this morning. I, I think I appreciate the, the, um, the timing of the persons who were asked to make um, tributes and, 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 and so forth. And the, the eulogy is so precise. Although I can't remember all of the things about my, my brother and friend, um, this gentleman was always my friend. School days. And um, Brother Cambridge was always a respectable person, even going to school. Um, I have fond memories about him, you know. I am, I am 85 years of age. And you will see how old he is. He was. He is 84. So we, we grew up together. I was always in this church. This church was approximately 100 years old. And I grew up here in Sunday school and everything and so on. And he was living over in the next avenue over there by Trent area there. And I would travel from here to the Rockies area and then come down the, 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 the road between that area there and I would meet his, his parents and so on in that area and so forth. But he and I were very good friends. But one of the things that he used to have some horrible days with is I think the eulogy said it, so I can't. I don't think I want to. Uh, I have to say, well, I just repeat something, but not for any thing. But you used to call him Brocko, and, and I couldn't understand. If it was me, I couldn't. I could. I couldn't allow people to call him Brocko all the time. So <laughs> <laughs> you know. So I always admire him. He never fought. He never quarrelled. He never. He take everything for two. That young man, I tell you, we grew up in this area. You know, he and I. And, and, and he was such a nice man. Doing missionary work from 1966 through the years in the Caribbean Islands, Virgin Islands, America, Canada, and so forth and so on, and right up in, in, in Portland, Oregon State, where our headquarters is. And, and then I, I came home in 1973, where I take a pastorship in St. Vincent again, and I, I got in contact with him from time to time and so forth and so on. So fond memories with, with my brother over the years. And then he began to come to this church here. And um, I, I could see him trying his utter best to come down that hill and to come over and to get to come to the church to worship. And then after a while, we used to send the vehicle to pick him up and bring him up and so on. And then after, after the years passed go by, become very much unable and very scarce to come out of the vehicle to come into the, in, into the church and so on. But I had the privilege, as a worship here, and used to visit here, he accepted the Lord as his savior. And I had the privilege to baptize him in water. And ever since over the years, that man was very, very, very faithful. We had him. The women's ministry here who used to visit him from time to time. And it's regrettable that um, the, the president of that lady's ministry, because of the, the, the timing of the day, not too many people are free to come to the funeral. So um, the person that was, was uh, asked to do the tribute to on behalf of um, the brother and the, and the, and the, and the women's ministry um, was unable to come. And um, even the choir, we only have one third, not even have one third of the choir, the, everybody working and, and so forth. So we understand how those things are. So God bless you. I am a very long preacher sometimes. Yes. But I'm going to give myself 
a challenge today, and I'll take 10 minutes to talk to you. I'll take 10 minutes to talk to you. And I'm going to read a very known scripture from in St. Matthew's Gospel, St. John's Gospel, chapter 14, John 14. Um, <coughs> how many children do you just said? Uh, six? Uh, Sixteen or six? Six, <laughs> six is it? Yeah. Uh, my wife had six children for me as well. And this is, this is what, you told one? Okay. Before, you were well. And, and all of my children got saved, thank God, and um, three, two of them, two of them and I, and two of the grandchildren are pastors in, in churches in Trinidad and so I So let me get to my, I said 10 minutes. Um, Sister, Sister Balcaran, yes. Dr. Balcaran, yes. if I go beyond 10 minutes, ring that bell for me. <laughs> Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Not me, you know. Jesus speaking. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if, we could translate that word if into sense. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. If is not a proposal, is a sense. I am going. It's a fact. And as I go, I will come again. And I'm going to receive you unto myself, that where I am, there he may be also. Any Christian in that can say amen to that? Amen. That is the word of God. That is the word of Jesus Christ himself. He was here on earth. And he had his disciples, and his disciples knew that he was about to leave. They would just get acquainted with Jesus. They got to understand who Jesus is. They had a blessing to God. They have civilization preached to them. Civilization preached to them. They understand that is not the law. It's not the good works of people. Because the Bible says all of sin, and the only remedy for sin is Jesus Christ coming into the world to save and to save those which are lost. Amen. So he was about to leave, and he saw his disciples very sad, broken hearted, almost bewildered, thinking that Jesus who had done so much things in their lives and in, in their, uh, and their knowledge of, of what they have seen Jesus have done in all kind of miracles and converting souls and healing sick bodies and doing all manner of evil. You mean to tell me you're going to have Jesus going away and what are we going to do? So their heart was troubled. Their heart was very much troubled and Jesus saw it and he knew it and he felt it. So he said, listen to me, don't, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't make your heart be troubled. Listen to me. You know a lot of people die today from heart troubles. Heart troubles are serious sickness, you know. In a moment of time, you're gone. I don't know if they've gone so far, but Jesus saw that their heart was troubled, knowing that they were going to miss the company of Jesus. But here, good part of it. You say, you know why? Because I am going, no, I'm not going home, I'm not going back to relax. I am going to prepare a place for you. In my father's house are many, many mansions, but I am going to prepare a place for you. Isn't that wonderful? And if I go, I said, what sense? Since I go, I will come again. Amen. Thank God for that promise. And I will receive you unto myself, that where I am, 
Won't you like to be wherever Jesus is? Yes. Where I am, there he may be. You are going, I'm going to carry you in a place where there will be no more sadness, no more heartaches, no more heart troubles, no more crying, no more weeping. Oh, praise God. No more cemeteries, no more undertakers. I already undertaken here today, feel frightened over that, but just now there will be no undertakers. God bless you. <laughs> no more hospitals, no more undertakers, no, nothing like that, but thank God we have been a place of rest. Amen. Enjoying the blessings of God forevermore. Amen. Forevermore! Amen. Hold on to that promise. Amen. And the story went on. And Jesus had to console them because they were very upset. And Jesus had to bring them down to some understanding. He said, over in heaven, where are you going to prepare this place for you? You are not going to have no more sorrows here. You're not going to have no more pain. No more crying. <laughs> what a privilege. What a, what a promise. No more crying. I, I something I think about that, brothers and sisters and friends and preachers. Jesus said to them, the Bible said in Revelation, that there will be no more crying, no more sorrows, no more heartaches, and so on and so on. Huh? What a great thing that would be. But you know what? He said, um, he said, no more tears. I don't know if somebody can help me explain that. No more tears and no more crying. Is there a difference? Think about it. No more tears and no more crying. What is the difference? Well, that's a wonderful promise. Some people, sister, brother, some people living in this world today, they ain't crying. They're not crying. Now. They go, oh, oh, oh. not so. But tears, tears running down the eye, the, the, the stomach sack with tears. Tears flowing down here. Why? Because there's some kind of grief, some kind of bereavement, some kind of sorrow, and those tears is flowing down. But thank God, God said in over in heaven that I am going to prepare for you. There is not going to be no more tears up there. No more tears. Just about somebody who's a Christian say amen to that. No more tears up there. You'll find yourself sitting in the sitting room and, and, and just tears running down there because some, some serious thing happened with the family relatives or the neighbors and, you, and you're just throwing tears down and no sound. God said, Jesus said, no more of that in that place that I have gone to prepare. Yeah. And then, what about no more crying? What is the crying any different crying? Crying and, and well, somebody said, Mary, your mother just got an accident and you're dead. You say, oh, Lord, I'm busy. <laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> crying. You're crying out with a sorrow and a shock. That you get to hear such a sad news. But thank God there will be no more accidents in heaven. Amen. There will be no more crying and shouting and bereavement in heaven. We'll all be in heaven and say, What a day! Hallelujah! What a day of rejoicing that will be! And I have all confidence today, according to the testimony of my brother, that he has gone to be with the Lord. He is just absent from the body, and he is present with the God. With God. He is not in the grave. We are going to put his body there, but his soul has already exit from his body. And his soul is there with Jesus right now. Hallelujah. And you and I will have to make sure that we make our call in election show. And, and you know, one of the disciples was very curious about, about, about their absent, and his absent, and he wants to say, Lord, we, we, we don't know the way. Tell us something so that it could give us solace of our mind and heart. I don't know the way. Jesus said, you don't know the way? He said, so long you've been with me, you ain't know. He said, well, let me tell them, I am. I am the way. I am the way. The truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. 
I represent the organization of the Apostle Retreat Mission here, but I'll tell you something, this is not the way to heaven. Amen. This, this organization is not your salvation. It is a place of worship. You have to go to Jesus Christ, who is the way, Amen. the truth, Amen. and the life, and you can't get around it to go to heaven except to go through him. Amen. This great brother, this great brother has came in that way. He came in that way, and he testified about it. And when I heard that my brother died, I said, well, he's out of all his pains and sufferings. And now he's residing in heaven with Jesus Christ Amen. and the holy angels. Amen. Could you imagine those holy angels welcoming him in the new Jerusalem, in heaven? Hallelujah. And when you and I endure to the end, those of us say, listen to me, we have to endure to the end, you know. If you know how, if you know this brother's life, you will know he had great examples, you know. Yes. The gentleman who, you, who read the eulogy, he didn't make any mistake about the eulogy, you know. He gave something very clear about the brother. Yes. And I am happy today to represent him as his pastor, former pastor, and to represent him as a very faithful Christian in this mission here. Amen. And congratulated to you his wife, who has lived with that brother, that wonderful brother, and his children. I fall in love with these children, and I'll be glad that. They're so pretty. <laughs> I, I don't ever make a mistake when I told them, I said, listen, you all are really pretty. And we sat here and we discussed some matters and we talked all them stories and so on. These people are very trained people, wonderful Christian people. Well, one of belongs to the Faith Temple Church, and one belongs to the Methodist Church, and so on and so on. And we chat all the kind of thing, you know, we sit down here a long while and chat and so on. So I, 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 I want to give you thanks and praise for being here. And so, um, my wifey, <laughs> you have done a wonderful job with your husband. And children, you all have a wonderful father. You would like to see him again, isn't it? Well, you have to do what Jesus, the answer that Jesus gave, the way to where he is, is Jesus. I am the way. Truth and life. That's how I stand. I hope I make 11 minutes. <laughs> God bless you. Let us all pray. Let us, let us pray. Let us bow our heads and pray. And I want to, those, those, the relatives, children and grandchildren, and, and neighbors of, of this family, this, this brother who, who gone to do the Lord today, I want to pray for you in a special way. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come to thee in behalf of the bereaved sick wife and sick friends, sick wife and children and grandchildren and neighbors and friends and doctors and nurses who was instrumental in supporting and giving help to this brother who just passed the great divide. And we have our assurance today according to your word. He said, he that endure to the end, shall be saved. And I believe my brother had made it in. So I pray now for the relatives and the friends and children and, and neighbors and, and well-wishers. Bless them in a very special way. And I pray today that this service may be remembered that they will have to make the calling election show to meet their dad again, their friend, their neighbor in heaven. Without, if we don't turn to you and give our life to you, then our labor, our efforts, our hope will be in vain. Bless everyone. Bless everyone who attend this service today. Bless the one who preside in the program. And bless the rewards to those who have listened to me today. And take care of us as we go forward to the resting place. Sit away for us. Take us safely to the traffic. These favors we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Save in grace of our Lord and save in Jesus Christ. The love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. The rest of the Bible, our heart, love you in sincerity and in truth, both now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Remain standing as we sing the closing hymn in the sweet by and by.
Let's we ask you please, as we sing the song and the coffin procession starts, that you remain standing until the coffin goes out and then you can follow behind. Thank you very much.
begin our reading. Now the God of all peace who brought the game from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect even every good work, to do his will, working in you, that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now the God of we know that neither death, nor life, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, or any other creature can separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. We know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house, not made with hands, eternal in the heaven. Since our brother has now departed, out of this life, an almighty God in his mercy has taken unto himself to therefore come. To therefore commit his body to the ground. Dust to dust, ashes to ashes, earth to earth, for in certain hope of the resurrection of the body. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I heard a voice from heaven say unto me, Right, henceforth, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. Saving grace of our Lord and saving Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the rest of the bar our heart and love and sincerity in truth, both on forevermore. Amen. Him, shall we gather at the shall river? Shall we gather at the river? Shall we gather at the river? We're
when the roll is called up yonder, when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair, when the same no more shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is all up yonder, 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 on that bright and cloudless morning, on the bright and cloudless morning, when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of His resurrection. And the roll is called up yonder and be there. So when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder and be there. Let us live before the master. Let us live before the master from the long let us talk of the stars of our years, the stars of care. And all of life is over, and all of life is over, and the work of not is done. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll. Sweet by and by, we shall meet 
Excuse me, excuse me, no man. You can't tell people your work. I'm more John C. I'm going to put it I 
That's about it on YouTube. So thanks a lot for viewing. We are going offline now. So have a good afternoon and we are going offline now. Thank you. Bye-bye.